Thank you for joining this HPS Pharmacies webinar. My name is Rebecca Smith and I am a Senior Procurement Support Officer and Pharmacist with HPS. This webinar will provide information for hospital staff on the cost efficient use of impress medicines. Today's learning objectives are understanding how medications used during a patient's hospital visit are billed and who pays for them what intrinsic and extrinsic medications are and how to differentiate between them. How to identify the most cost efficient means of supply medications and to give you the tools to confidently use the traffic light system. Medications represent a significant cost in the hospital setting. The cost of these medications are paid for by either the patient or the hospital. Depending on the medication, these costs may also partially or fully be subsidised by the government under the Pharmaceutical Benefits Scheme, commonly known as the PBS. The determining factor as to whether the hospital or patient pays for the medication is if the medication is intrinsic or extrinsic. Intrinsic medications are any medications that are initiated during an episode of care. This includes medications taken prior to admission that have been changed to a different formulation. For example, an immediate release tablet being changed to a modified release tablet. Extrinsic medications are any medications taken prior to admission. This includes medications taken prior to admission that are used to treat an admission-related condition or medications taken prior to admission that have had a dose adjustment during the admission. As already mentioned, it is important to differentiate between intrinsic and extrinsic medications as these classifications determine who is responsible for payment. The hospital pays for all intrinsic medications for all patients. Private patients pay for extrinsic medications with the exception of Department of Veterans Affairs or DVA patients and BUPA patients. The hospital pays for all medications for these patients. For public patients, it will vary depending on the agreement in place. If this is applicable to your hospital, please check with your pharmacist. Your clinical pharmacist will annotate the medication chart to allow easier identification of intrinsic and extrinsic medications by checking the appropriate box. With respect to medications supplied on interest, the full cost is paid by the hospital. These medications are not eligible for PBS subsidies and they are for inpatient use only. For medications dispensed to patients, they are paid for by the hospital or the patient. This cost may be subsidised on the PBS. These medications are for inpatient use or discharge. The PBS co-payment shows how much an eligible prescription medication costs after government subsidies. From the 1st of January, 2023, the PBS co-payments are $7.30 for concessional and DVA patients, up to $30 for general patients, and no charge for concessional patients who have reached the safety net limit in that calendar year, and $7.30 for general patients who have reached the safety net in that calendar year. Certain brands of therapeutic group premiums may be charged on top of these prices and are set by the PBS. To identify the PBS entitlements for a patient from the patient label, the PC number indicates concession, an SN number indicates safety net, 
and no number indicates a general patient. A traffic light system is used to ensure medications are charged appropriately. This ensures the most cost-effective method of supply and determines if a prescribed medicine should be supplied from impressed or ordered from pharmacy. The traffic light system only applies to medication that will be hospital charged or intrinsic. All extrinsic medication should be ordered from the pharmacy. Impressed items are classified as red, amber or green medicines. Red medications must be ordered through the pharmacy for all patients using the medication chart. These are typically higher cost medications that are PBS subsidised. For example, Clexane, Pradaxa, Zarelto or Aranset. Dispensing on a prescription allows access to PBS pricing. An example of a red medication is Clexane, 100 milligrams. The cost of a box of 10 syringes is approximately $100 from Impressed. If dispensed to a patient on PBS, as seen earlier, it will cost $0 for safety net entitlement, $7 for a concessional patient or $30 for a general patient. Therefore, significant cost savings can be made when Clexane is dispensed to the patient. In addition to cost considerations, medications may be included on the red list to ensure continued therapy or to meet local hospital protocol. For example, oral antibiotics should be dispensed to the patient from pharmacy so the full prescribed course can be completed. Restricted antibiotics may need to be dispensed so that they can be recorded on AMS if this is applicable to your hospital. Red medications are stored on Impress to allow timely initiation of therapy. Administer a single dose from Impressed or until the pharmacy can dispense to the patient. Ongoing supply must be ordered from pharmacy via the medication chart. This is an example of a red medication list. Each Impressed location will have Impressed lists tailored to the clinical specialty of the area. Posters that are specific to your impress location will be prominently displayed, so there is no need to memorize the full list. Shelf talkers will also be installed to ensure easy identification of red and amber medicines. Amber medications are medicines that cost more than the PBS concessional co-payment, co but less than the general co-payment. That is between $7.30 and $30. For example, isoptin 240 milligram 30 tablets. The most cost effective way to supply amber medicines is for the pharmacy to, dis to dispense to DVA, concessional, and safety net patients and supply from impressed for general patients. The cost of isoptin 240 milligram 30 tablets on Impressed is approximately $11. If dispensed on the PBS, it would cost nothing for a safety net patient and $7 for a concessional or DBA patient. As this example shows, moderately priced amber medications such as isoptin are only cheaper when dispensed to patients with concessional entitlements. For patients without a concession, it is more cost-effective to supply from Impressed. This is an example of an amber medication list. Your Impressed location may have a tailored list of amber medicines displayed on the wall, as well as shelf talkers. Medications on the green list are typically inexpensive or do not attract a PBS subsidy. For example, aspirin, 
paracetamol, or frusamide. As the hospital pays for intrinsic medicines, it is therefore most cost effective to supply intrinsic medicines from the impressed cupboard. An exception exists for PBS items prescribed for patients who have a safety net entitlement as their co-payment is zero dollars. For these patients, all intrinsic and extrinsic PBS medicines should be dispensed from the pharmacy. Your clinical pharmacist will determine which medications fit these criteria when undertaking their chart review. A decision tree is displayed in each impressed location to simplify the selection process. Shelf talkers have also been, been installed to highlight medicines that are on red or amber lists at the point of product selection. Lists of red and amber medicines have also been compiled that are specific for each impressed location. These may be displayed on the wall next to the decision tree. As mentioned, the decision tree provides an easy to use flowchart to identify the most appropriate pathway for ordering a medication. The first question to answer is, is the medication a discharge medication? If yes, order from HPS pharmacies with a copy of the medication chart, ensuring that the discharge box is ticked on the medication order cover sheet if it isn't a discharge medic medicine, is the medication intrinsic? If yes, refer to the medication traffic light system posters to determine the classification. If the medication isn't intrinsic, is the patient with BUPA or DVA? For BUPA or DVA patients, again, refer to the medication traffic light system posters. If not BUPA or DVA, order the medications to be dispensed from HPS pharmacies with the extrinsic box checked on the order cover sheet. These are examples of the shelf talkers in place for red and amber impress medicines. They provide a simple reminder of the impress supply system and should help you to identify the most cost-effective method of supply. The decision tree can then be referred to if further information is required. I will now run through two scenarios. Mrs Smith has just been admitted to your ward and, not, and has not brought any of her own medicines with her. She has a DVA entitlement and regularly takes Eliquis and Buscapan. Her medication chart has been written and includes Eliquis, five milligrams, one tablet twice a day. Buscapan tablets, one tablet three times a day. And Kefazolin, one gram every six hours. As Mrs Smith has a DVA card, it is more cost effective to dispense all PBS medications from the pharmacy. In this case, only the Buscapan tablet should be supplied from the impress cupboard as they are not subsidised on the PBS. How would the supply of these medications change if Mrs Smith was a general patient with private health insurance through Bupa? The change in entitlement status from DVA to general means that we only need to consult the decision tree for intrinsic medications. All extrinsic medications must be dispensed to the patient. Therefore, the method of supply does not change for Eliquis. However, being a general patient, Mrs. Smith would now be responsible for the payment of her extrinsic Buscapan tablets. These should, therefore, be dispensed to her from the pharmacy. The intrinsic medication, Kefazolin, would now need to be supplied from the impress cupboard rather than dispensed to the patient, as it was in scenario one. As kefazolin is an amber medication, 
It is only cost effective to dispense to patients with a concession or safety net entitlement. These scenarios are helpful to show how medications can change in classification, which in turn determines the most cost effective supply method. Please keep in mind that for antibiotics, you may have local hospital AMS rules to follow, in which case there may be restrictions around certain antibiotics and them needing to be dispensed. In summary, following these guidelines ensures medication is supplied cost efficiently and consistently. Please consult your clinical pharmacist if you have any queries. Thank you for watching this webinar. HPS Pharmacies also offers a lecture series via webinar recordings. Visit our Knowledge Centre on hps.com.au for current topics. Thank you again for joining me.